closer to my boss with sex workers on his yacht. Was there anything about the Evacina Man of Wealth that made you uneasy? We are about to go into a real bad cost of, you know, living crisis. But th these people are on like a whole different level of us and they don't, I don't even think they know what's kind of happening. Do you think they should care? Yeah, I mean, I think people should do good things with, with their wealth. Would you recommend someone else to do it as a job? I think you have to be quite mentally strong to be able to do it. You get, you know, quite a lot of shit put on you. How did you get yourself into working on the yachts? It's winter in England and a few of my friends are away working on yachts in gorgeous climates, as you can imagine. They ended up convincing me to go and work on these yachts. So I'm flying to America with $200 in my, in my wallet and £500 in my bank account. I have my first night's stay sorted, but other than that, I've got nothing else. So need to try and figure out working on a yacht quickly, which I've managed to do. I was in America for two weeks and now I'm in Florida on a boat. I'm super excited. I get to travel around the world, doing all these cool things, earning really good money, working on these amazing yachts. What kind of money were you earning? When you tend to start out on yachting, the average salary roughly is about two and a half grand a month, okay. which is tax free. And then on top of that, if you work on a charter boat, it's roughly around about $2,000 per week for tips as well, oh, wow. which again is tax free. You have a chef that cooks for you. You have people that do your laundry. You sleep, you sleep on the boat as well, so you don't have to pay any rent or anything. So the only outgoings really is your phone bill. So if you were going to hire a yacht for the weekend or even a day, how much are you looking at? The time that I was working on it is about 250000 for the week, which doesn't include fuel, food or docking fees, which can actually work up to be quite a lot of money. I worked on this one boat. We travelled around the whole of the Mediterranean doing lots of things. They chartered the boat for four weeks, which was about a million euros. I think they bought 60 suitcases on board. So they chartered a private jet to go back home just for the luggage and another one for themselves. So near enough to two million dollars for four weeks holiday. Crazy. Oh <laughs> so in your career, what was the most absurd amount of money to have spent on, I don't know, maybe a handbag or maybe a bottle of champagne or vodka or anything like that? Yeah, there's a few things that come to mind. We had this one boat that I worked. It was the owners on board and they had some friends who they obviously admired and respected quite a lot so they told me to go and get this one particular bottle of whiskey which we did a bit of research on afterwards and it, it was about 120,000 pounds just for one you know we had beach clubs booked with a minimum spend of 30,000 euros or whatever okay. was there anything about the obscene amount of wealth that made you uneasy it's, it's a hard one because i do understand we are about to go into a real bad cost of you know living crisis um but th these people are on like a whole different level of us and they don't, I don't even think they know what's kind of happening. No, but these are the people that are directly making money off these energy companies. I don't believe that people get rich without exploiting other people. I just don't think that's true. No, I, I agree with you. I don't think they know exactly how bad the cost of living crisis is going to be. Um, and even if they do, I don't think they're going to do a huge amount about it. Do you think they should care? Yeah, I mean, I think people should do good things with, with their wealth. So in your career, what was the most outrageous thing that you ever saw? I'm in the Mediterranean. It's one of the children's 21st birthdays. So they've obviously got their friends over. They want to have a good time. They want to come out drinking. The father is flying from London on his private jet to, to join them for the birthday. So obviously they want their dad to be there. Their dad says he's very jet lagged. I worked really closely with him, almost as a PA. So. You know, if he needed something, he would he would call me. He informed his kids that he were he wasn't going to come out that night, and they're fine with that. They're absolutely fine. They left the boat. His friend comes on board with five sex workers. So then he comes upstairs and chats with them, does what he needs to do, gives me an envelope with quite a nice amount of money in, tells me which one to go and speak to. I go and speak to her and say, one of the other crew will now show you off the boat. So she you know, didn't make the cut, as you would say. But she gets um, like a going home fee. Yeah, so she's still got a fee for, I don't know, eating a Caesar salad or something. And that, do you know how you much have, that was? Yeah. I don't know, a couple of three grand, maybe. <laughs> I, I would eat a salad, no. for Caesar salad for three grand. He then brings one of the girls down to the cabin, whichever one he wants, you know, that's, that's fine with him. His friend who came on board brings another girl into a cabin 
then we get informed that the kids are coming on their way back. So I go and inform him and he closes the door with the girl in and waits around us. Yeah. The kids come back on board, we see how their dinner was. They ask how their dad was. I had to say, yeah, he's fine, he just had a chilled night. The kids have, you know, some drinks upstairs, they leave. And then I have to inform him and then we get her off the boat and get on with our job. How did that make you feel? I could have probably done a few things differently. I think it's less about the the sex workers and more about his family. Um, I think his wife, I know for a fact that she had no idea that things Got were you, happening. so it was like lying to her. Yeah, and therefore all, all the crew were also lying. So is that something that happened quite frequently then? It's not an abnormal thing to happen. It wasn't a shocking revelation to have sex workers on the boat, even when there's family on board as well. It's quite a normal thing. For, for that sort of industry. Was there like anything dangerous or anything illegal that happened on the boat? Yeah, not on this boat that I worked on particularly, but on other boats that I've worked on, there has been lots of partying. You would, you know, you would assume lots of things that happen. We have, you know, big parts on the boats where there's plates of, of drugs. So they were like drug parties? It is like a party and it's just, for them, it's just, you know. It's like having a bottle. Yeah, it's like having, a nice bottle of wine out or a good bottle of vodka or some gin, you know, that's just what they would do in, pre in preparation for a party. Did you not feel weird having to keep those kind of secrets? I just kind of don't think of it as an emotional thing. I just get on with it. It's part of my job, essentially, um, to be quiet about things like this. You know, if I went to the captain about it, I guarantee there'll be an excuse for me to be fired the next day mm -hmm. if I start talking about it. Did you ever, like, slip up and think, I'm going to get fired for this? Unfortunately, in the yachting industry, there's not really such a one-strike, two-strike, three-strike sort of situation. It's you're one out strike. or you're in. Yeah. For example, a friend of mine got fired for cutting cucumbers the wrong way. Oh, my God. So How did he cut these uh, cucumbers? Not the way that the boss liked it. <laughs> did you ever, like, sign an NDA? Because, obviously, I'm sure you saw you saw a lot of stuff that you just can't talk about. Yeah, most boats that you work on when you sign a contract, there is there is a form of an ending on there. So what was the recruitment process? Because at the end of the day, they don't know you from anywhere. How do they know they can trust you? When you work on yachting, you have to have a few qualifications, which obviously everyone has to check. The way you look is definitely a part of it. Yeah. I know people that, you know, have got a job very, very quickly because they're blonde and blue eyed. And unfortunately, that's the reality of that sort of industry. I know someone that had an interview for it, and they said that they have size zero and size two uniforms, and if you can fit into that, then great. Mm -hmm. And if you um, can't, you can't have the job. Did you ever feel degraded by the way that they could have spoken to you, these rich people? Yeah, but I think what you've got to remember is that, that all these people have got really stressful jobs, so they might flip out. The captains probably get most of the brunt of it because they're the, they're the people that are the highest on the yacht. They're the ones that make the decisions. Why are you fearful to tell it behind a mask and not openly? I feel like a lot of people might not like the story that I am saying, but it is the reality of things. So do you regret anything that you saw? I truly believe that you shouldn't go through life trying to regret things you did in the past. Would you recommend someone else to do it as a job? I think you have to be quite mentally strong. You get you know, quite a lot of shit put on you. After a few years, I kind of felt like it was my time to, to leave yachting, but it has taught me quite a lot.